Today, we're going to go through the easiest way of getting a drawing machine or a pen plotter to write in a passable handwriting style. Not the best, not the cheapest, and not your handwriting, but the easiest. And I'll explain the drawbacks at the end. Also, people see like drawing machine holding a pen, and there's a few videos on YouTube of it doing handwriting, and they think, oh yeah, that, that makes perfect sense, a handwriting robot. Seems easy. Turns out that uh, handwriting is one of the harder things to do with a plotter, but let's just do it. Like, no nonsense, the easy way, here we go. You'll need a pen plotter, a drawing robot. So we have an AXA draw here and an eye draw here, but pretty much anything that understands SVG files, I recommend one of these two. If you already have one, that's great. But if you don't, then they're really easy to set up. Even I could do it, so we'll skip that process here. The eye draw is about two and a bit times faster than the AXA draw for this type of handwriting thing. Although I'm more used to using the AXA draw, and I prefer the direction when you have a fountain pen at an angle, the AXA draw holds it at this angle, which is, seems more natural to me, whereas the eye draw holds it at this angle. But for most pens that you hold vertically, then they're both absolutely fine. And I'd happily use both of them on a weekly basis. If you've got a lot of writing to get through, then probably this one. Inkscape, you need Inkscape. It's a vector art software, a bit like Adobe Illustrator, where you get to draw like shapes on it and then send those to the plotter. Both the AXA draw and uh, the eye draw have an easy to install extension for it. So here it is, AXA draw control, we do all that, we apply, it'll print it out. Extensions, eye draw control, looks virtually the same apply and then it will go plot it out. The eye draw come with really easy instructions on how to do it. I mean, I could do it, so we're going to skip that. Step three, install the Hershey extension, which is like a font thingy manager, which is what we're going to be using. I don't remember installing it as a whole separate extension, so I think it comes with Inkscape now and it has done for quite a while. But if you don't have it, there I'll put a link down below and iDraw and AxaDraw both have like easy to follow instructions on how to install that. And you need this because a normal font, even if it looks like handwritten ones with strokes, is really just an outline and your plotter will sort of draw all the way down one side of the letter, then all the way back up the other side, which both looks weird and it also takes twice as long. I mean, you'd like to think it would just draw the strokes as you would imagine it, but no, which is why we need this Hershey extension. So let's get on with handwriting font the bad way. First, we're going to type in some text. I've got some on the clipboard, so I'm going to paste in text here, a whole bunch of repeated A's, T's, upcase T's and S's. Then we're going to go up to the extension, text, Hershey text here, and we're going to pick one of these. So I'm going to use EMS Allure. There's all these. EMS have a whole bunch of other ones. I'll add a link down to that, but I'm going to stick with Allure for the moment. Or we can use the live preview. They'll show us what it's going to look like. And if we zoom in, there is our handwriting font. So you can see it's fine, useful for kind of writing, you know, IDs or data or series numbers or something like that. But it's very obviously not handwritten. And we can do better. So over to step four, which is just buy a good single stroke handwriting font. You're going to go to the Quantum Enterprises website, uh, link again below. And up here under handwriting fonts, there's single line handwriting font. And then you're going to go down here and tick version five to get all the 99 pound fonts. I think that's like $125. I'm not sponsored by Quantum Enterprises. I don't know Quantum Enterprises. I have no affiliate links to Quantum Enterprises. It's just that they're, they're really, really good. Anyway, we're going to scroll down until we find one that we like. I quite like the look of this one. So we're going to click on it. And this is the important thing. Also click on the view character sheet here because it shows you which characters are included or which ones aren't. So the version 5s tends not to have all of these. They do say that you can add or replace any characters you require when placing an order. I've not had to do that. So anyway, we'll pick this one and uh, buy it, which I'm obviously not going to show you. Once you've done that, you'll uh, download the font and unzip it. And you can see in here we've got three fonts. We've got a true type font, which is your normal font. And then we've got a true type open font, which is like normal true type one, but it only has a single line. But lots of programs will try to close that. So you can see here it's trying to join up the start and ends of the line. And then here we've got an SVG, which is like a standard SVG font format, but it's not like an SVG you can just import and then start to manipulate and things like that. But it is the one that we're going to start using. So we need to know the path for this. Let me just grab that. So we're back to Inkscape. 
extensions, text, Hershey text, and then we're going to use other, which is down here. Remove this. Paste in the path to where our SVG is. And there we go, which is great. It's a more handwritey, handwritten font, but it's still not quite there. If someone was sort of suspicious of your handwriting, they could scrutinize it and go, well, wait a minute, all these letter E's look exactly the same. Like, all these letter T's are the same. I think there's some shenanigans afoot. In a normal font, you generally have one glyph per letter. So a normal A, then a fancy A, a normal B, and a fancy B, and so on. But it's still just one, like, letter per letter. So what Quantum Enterprises has done is they've made multiple versions uh, of each of the letters. So in a normal font, you have your A, A, B, 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 so all the way down to Z, Z. And when you run out of letters and you run out of the normal symbols and all the numbers, they're using all these extended Unicode characters that you wouldn't normally use. We'll go back to Quantum Enterprises. We're going to select the single line handwriting fonts. And then down here, there's a link to access the Scriptalyzer software. We're going to click on that, paste our text in, make sure we're selecting the one that we've just bought. I'm 91 here. And then we hit the Scriptalyze button. And then whatever this weird button over here is, which gives us all these funny, strange characters. And you can see we've got all this. This is the text at the top. And then here, these are our A's, T's, T's, and whatever this is down here. So we're going to select this. Back over to Inkscape, paste it in. Looks weird. Extensions, text, Hershey text, live preview, why not? And apply it. And now we can see that we have on the A's here, they're kind of different. There's variations for them. A couple of double T's there, F's. All the uppercase T's are still the same, but we've got our range of S's down here. Obviously, the more text you have, if this is like a whole letter, the more repeated letters you have, so the easier it will be to spot for. But for £99 or $125, US it's pretty good. You can sort of, uh, if you need to, you can ungroup them. So we're going to ungroup them, and then you get them as lines. And then we can ungroup that, and so on. And then start moving different parts of it around. So just like a normal SVG at this point. If you go back to our quantum enterprises yet again, and then pick version six instead, then what these do, if we go have a look at, say this first one here, and then pick the character sheet, you can see it's actually got more of these missing letters down here that have the umlauts and the accents over the top. It also has more variations of each letter, and then it has variations of the uppercase letters as well. So our version 5 didn't have variations on that uppercase T, but the version 6 version will. So it's definitely worth checking those character sheets if, there, if there's a font that you're interested in. And that is probably the easiest way of getting a good handwritten font with a variety of letters that will pass the first glance test for like 125 bucks. That, that's what I'll do. So, drawbacks. Now the first big problem, or rather, if you're an artist or you're sending out a few cards and you're using a pen plotter, you can probably handle copying the text from somewhere where you've written it to the Scriptalyzer website, pasting the text in, hitting the buttons, copying the text back out, taking it over to Inkscape, pasting the text in, extensions, text, Hershey, convert it, and then you're done simple. But if you're hoping to automate all that for the for a pen plotter, then it's quite a lot harder. Now, Quantum Enterprises, they do offer a DLL for all your Windows.NET programming, which I'm not familiar with. And they also offer an API, which is like £99, I think, and you get 10,000 quests per day. So that will probably do you. But all that does is it converts the text that you send it into those weird extended characters. You still have to paste it into Inkscape and then do the Hershey text conversion. If you were printing from like Word to a, like a laser printer, or you're doing some mail merge software again to a traditional printer, then you'll just use the true type font with those characters and it'll be fine. But because we're working with pen plotters and drawing robots and drawing machines, we can't really use that normal true type font from, from code. Alternatively, you have to somehow automate Inkscape and the Hershey step, which is kind of tricky. So it's brilliant for like one-off things done by hand, but automating the whole process for the pen plotter would probably be pretty hard. The other drawback is that with a medium to large amount of text, if you pay attention, the horizontal lines are really, really straight. They're sort of unnaturally straight. So you'd probably want to adjust the 
the offsetting and the up and downness of them, which is something that I do encode for my own stuff, and you'd probably want to do here. But anyway, there we have it. That's the this is the easiest way to do handwriting style with a pen plotter. Not necessarily the best, by which I mean automated, not the cheapest, as in it's not free if you're looking for a free solution, and it's not your handwriting, although quantum enterprises do offer that service. You fill in a form and you send it in, it takes about a month or something like that. But there's a good variety of styles on the quantum enterprises website, which will probably get you pretty close. If you wanted a fully automated drawing machine solution, then you still have quite a lot of work to do. The stuff that you may have seen me doing so far has been very much focused on like adding even more variety into the letters and the lines by using blending and smoothing and randomness and, and all of that type of thing through writing a little back-end drawing program where you can send it some text and it draws it all and moves around a bit and then it returns you the ready to plot SVGs and that was pretty hard and I'm not quite ready yet but I will make a video about the whole process that I used to do it and uh, yeah I think we're pretty much done. I am Daniel Cat, a contemporary print artist and pretty awesome coder, and I also make videos about drawing machines, generative art, and my life here in the studio. So if you want to find out more about that, you can stick around here. Drop your inevitable questions in the comments down below, and I will see you next time.